So, is there any difference between the Quanshang UVK5, the UVK5 parentheses 8, and the UVK6? Let's take a look. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. We're sneaking up on 10,000 subscribers, and I really appreciate it. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Quanshang UV K5 parentheses 8 version of the UV K5 Cam HT. I reviewed the UV K5 just a couple of months ago when it first came out, so I was a bit surprised when the K5 parentheses 8 model hit the store so soon afterwards. I'll refer to it as the K5 Parents 8. To make things even more confusing, Quanshang is also marketing a UVK6 radio that's a dead ringer for the K5 Parents 8. As is fairly common for AliExpress merchants, labeling is often hit and miss, and in this case, it appears the difference between the K6 and the K5 Parents 8 is a small difference in the frequency range the radios transmit on. Here's a shot of the K5 specs. Note the frequency range for the 70 centimeter band. In this shot from a vendor offering the K6, note the 70 centimeter range is 10 megahertz higher. In this shot, another vendor is offering the K6, showing the same ranges as the K5 Parents 8. Go figure. My guess is that the main difference in transmit ranges is the market the radios are targeted at. As hams, we're supposed to stay on our assigned band, so it probably doesn't make any difference other than the K5 variants have FCC identification numbers. Note that the difference document listed in the FCC database for the K5 states the K5 parents 8 is the same as the K5. Also note that the K5 Parents 8 photo is shown in with the same files as the K5. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at the K5 Parents 8 and do a quick tour of the menus. The main features are the same as the K5 I reviewed previously, so take a look at those videos. I don't plan on duplicating those expanded comments here. I'll link them in the video description below and in the end card to this video. So here's the box that the uh, Quanshang K5 Parents 8 comes in. Nothing special. Held it up through shipping and it all came through uh, just fine. Comes with the user's manual and this manual is the same as the one that came with the UVK5. In fact, even the drawings inside are of the K5 as opposed to the K5 Parents 8. So it's okay. It describes the menu items and how to do basic things, so not bad. This is the desktop charger that came with the radio. Notice that it's got the European style plugs here, uh, and so you're going to need an adapter. Uh, I got one of these from another brand that had an adapter, so I happen to have one, but you may want to add that to your order, or if you're planning to use this with USB-C charging, it won't matter anyway. This will just be something that you uh, toss in a drawer. Uh, but basically, it's the basic desktop uh, charger. It'll take, you know, 110 to 120 volts. Outputs 8.4 volts at 500 milliamps for uh, charging the battery. You can't get one of these little radios without a, a wrist strap. And so the wrist strap is here. It's got a belt clip. And unlike some of the belt clips that uh, uh, screw onto the battery or the radio itself, this one clips up. And we'll show you that here on the radio in just a second. And then it's got the typical rubber ducky antenna. It's a dual band antenna. Frequency ranges are printed on the, uh, the little uh, insert there on the bottom of the antenna. 
and uh, as you can see this is the socket side of the antenna so the plug side is on the radio hey just a quick break to let you know that you can support the gadget talk channel by using buy me a coffee it's a crowdsourcing platform where viewers can make a one-time donation or become a member of the gadget talk community your support helps provide resources to purchase some of the items reviewed on the channel. I'll put a link in the description below the video. Now, back to our topic. So let's take a quick look at the radio. Here you can see the, uh, the, the standard K5. I've reviewed this one before. And you can see the differences. It's pretty much the same size. However, you know, this little insert here is different on this radio. These are two buttons versus rockers on this radio. Screen size appear to be about the same same nor orange knob on the top um, but uh, just a little bit different in terms of style so let's take a look at this radio and see what's going on so across the top we've got the screen we've got the speaker we've got the hole for the microphone right there the menu buttons labeled a up and down are labeled b and c and exit is down here it is labeled d the Number keys are down here at the bottom of the radio. The function key is down here, so it will activate these functions associated uh, with the keys, and they're uh, printed on the keys themselves. Uh, this is not A, B, C, D, E, F, and so forth like you might see on a telephone. These are functions, uh, and that's an indicator that naming channels is not going to be able to do on the radio itself. You'll need to do that on the software. So we'll turn over to this side here. We've got the uh, K1 connector. You've got the two and a half and three and a half uh, millimeter plugs for a uh, programming cable or a uh, uh, hand mic. Here is the cover for the USB-C, and you can see that down in there. So you can plug in here to charge the radio if you don't want to use that charge uh, cradle. Uh, down here in the back, here's where the uh, belt clip goes. And this particular radio has a... Uh, just kind of a push button release on the battery. So let's do that. And so you can see it's got, you know, a metal frame in here and um, it's got the FCC ID number there on the decal. Uh, the battery is a 1600 milliamp hour uh, battery. So it's a little on the small side and it just goes in there. This, the reverse of when it went out, snaps in, charging buttons for the cradle. Over on this side, we've got the primary push to talk, uh, program side key one, program side key two. On the top, flashlight, LED there, on off and volume right here. The antenna connector, which as I said, has got the socket side in the antenna and the plug side in the radio. And so that's a quick tour of the exterior of the radio. Let's take a minute and turn this on and do just a, a quick tour of what the screen looks like and some of the menus. Welcome, channel mode one. So you can see when I turn it on, it comes in at this uh, bright orange color, which is a little bit different. I'm gonna try to keep this uh, off so you can see the numbers here on the screen. It gets a little hard with the camera sometimes, uh, but the menus work the same as uh, the other K5, UV K5. So we've got the squelch, if you want the menu again, press it, moves the little carrot, and then you use the up and down to change the number. And then use menu again to select, and then you can continue going up through the menus. This is uh, menu 51, that's reset, um, channel delete, NOAA scan, uh, AM off or on, volume. All of those things are there, and I reviewed these all in my previous video, so I'm not going to go into a great deal of depth here, other than to show just one other thing. So let me turn this off. And so if I press the side key one and the push to talk while turning it on, now you can see I've got the hidden menus, and I worked through those. I've described those to you again before, but you can you can get transmit on the 350 band uh, frequency locks. If I go into that, uh, I can 
I can select that. And then now I can get choices for America, the United States, for the European Union, Great Britain, uh, frequency locking the 430, 438 and off. So it gives you a little bit more control than the standard firmware for this radio. Uh, so I'm gonna go up to FCC, select that. And, uh, and then I can go down to each of my other transmit ranges and choose to turn it on or off. So I'm gonna go back through and, and you know turn those off because I don't like to uh, run the risk of transmitting out of band, but those extra uh, menus are included in this radio, the same as it is with the standard uh, UVK5. Now, one of the things I wasn't able to demonstrate in my previous review was the, the wireless duplication between these Quan Chang radios because I didn't have two. But now that I do, let's show you how that works. To get into the wireless copy mode, you press the side key two, push to talk, and then turn on the radio. Do that for both. Then set a common frequency. The default frequency is outside the US handband, so I've changed it to um, a VHF frequency that is inside the handband. Now it tells you to press the exit button for the receive, and I don't think it's going to do anything because it's already in the receive mode here. <clears throat> but then press the menu button on the transmitting radio uh, to begin the process. And so what we ought to be able to see is this line change, and then it'll count up as we um, move them. So I'm going to spread these apart just a little bit and press menu. And then now you can see sending four, five, six, seven, receiving six, seven, eight. Uh, and so we're going through, and I think I've got like 20 or 21 channels set in this radio. So this seems to have stopped at channel 120 or 120 transmissions uh, between the two radios. So let's get out of this mode and see if we've cloned this radio over to that radio. So here I'm in channel mode and let's see if we've got those channels that I just had. So my VHF call, UHF call, club repeater, And there we go. All of the repeaters that I had programmed into that uh, UVK5 are now here in this UVK5 current 8. So that is pretty handy, that on the air or over the air cloning. Uh, and it's as easy as what we just watched. I wanted to point out one other addition to the ham shack here, and that is this map from Quirky QRP. You can find them on Etsy. I think this size map was about $50. They've got a larger map that's about the size of the gray map that I often demonstrate on, uh, and that's about $75. And this is pretty handy. It's got the phonetic alphabet, Q codes, uh, the amateur band here is really handy for me, calling frequencies and uh, uh, for both the HF, UHF, and the uh, HF, plus the uh, uh, Morse code is down there along with the, the RST codes down here on the bottom. So um, this has got a nice soft surface. The, the printing on it is, is pretty good. There's a little bit of texture on this surface, and so it's not as sharp as it would be on paper, but it's easily readable, it's clear, uh, and it's got a really nice uh, set of colors that are subdued, but yet uh, colorful at the same time. So I don't have any affiliation with Quirky QRP, give them a look and they've got this particular outline in a whole bunch of different products, including the map that you see here. So that's the down and dirty on the K5 Perrins 8, uh, the video tour of the radio and a quick tour of the menus. You can find some videos here on YouTube that describe some user generated firmware that opens the radio up a bit. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, do a search. They're pretty easy to find. Just keep in mind the limits of your license. As we wrap this up, 
Let's take a quick look at the K5 Perrin's 8's power output. We're going to start in the VHF band and on low power. And so we're going to, we've got the MFJ 874 set for power in 5 watts. And so we're going to be reading it on the lower arc of the meter. So here is low power. About 2.3, 2.2 watts on low power. And now let's do the same frequency on high power, high power. So about 3.9, almost 4 watts on high power. And this last reading we'll do on medium power since this radio has three power settings. So here we go, same frequency VHF on medium power. We've got about 2.6, 2.5. So those are the three power settings here in the VHF. So let's change up to the UHF band. So here we are um, in the UHF band and we'll go through the power settings in the same order. So this is low power about 2.3, 2.4. This is high power, about 3.4, 3.5, yeah, 3.4. And then here is the medium power setting. Again, on the low band, looks to be about 2.8. So those are the power settings coming out of this little Huan Chang K5 parentheses 8. So there you have it. The K5 Parents 8 is a nice little radio. The styling is definitely different from the K5, and the speaker seems to be a bit of an upgrade too. Since the guts of the radio are the same as the K5, there's no surprise that performance is pretty much the same. For most of us, the difference is mostly about the styling. Take a look over here. If you missed my original K5 review and advanced feature, follow-up videos for a more in-depth look at the K5. Again, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and 73.